Boston, where we are learning new details about the investigation into body parts found in Milwaukee County. A severed leg was found on a beach on April 2nd, and it had been preliminary identified to belonging to 19-year-old Shade Robinson. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office uh, and Police Department did hold a news conference uh, a little bit ago this morning. Uh, let's go into that press conference that happened just moments ago. Morning, folks. I'm James Burnett, spokesman for the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. I am here with uh, Milwaukee County Sheriff Danita Ball, Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman. A little bit of housekeeping really quickly. You probably know this. If you don't, you probably should not be here. Sheriff Ball, D-E-N-I-T-A-B-A-L-L. -L. Chief Norman, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-N-O-R-M-A-N. We good? Great. Okay, so we're here for a briefing on the uh, an ongoing investigation for human remains that were discovered early last week, and uh, again, all the subsequent information that has come after that. I have to tell you, this briefing may be brief because there are a number of questions we may not be able to answer. That said, uh, Sheriff Ball, Chief Norman will give you what they can, and uh, on that, I will uh, hand it off to the sheriff. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to give a brief update regarding the severed leg that was found and some of the human remains that have been found throughout Milwaukee County. As you know, on April the 2nd at approximately 5.29 p.m., Milwaukee County 911 dispatch received a call from Cudahy Police Department regarding a severed leg at Warnermont Park. It was near the golf course and the uh, pumping um, house. And so uh, the leg was amputated from the, uh, around the hip down. And uh, as a result, the, um, the leg appeared to be that of an African-American female. Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer who was aware of our investigation, raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting. And that uh, missing person was Sade Robinson. So um, on Wednesday, April the 4th, our investigation led to a person of interest Maxwell Steven Anderson, who lives in the 3100 block of South 39th Street, where he was arrested after a traffic stop near the home. A search warrant was conducted. The severed leg has been preliminarily identified as belonging to Ms. Robinson. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Robinson family, friends, and the Milwaukee community who have embraced this family. We are sorry for your loss. It's such a tra tragic incident. Our investigators have worked around the clock on this investigation. As a result of their diligence and with the help of our criminal justice partners, the district attorney's office issued charges today against Maxwell Stephen Anderson for first degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson of property other than building. He remains in custody. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office would like to thank all of our partners involved in this investigation, specifically the Milwaukee Police Department, the Cudahy Police Department, the Kenosha Police Department, the Madison Police Department K-9 Unit, Great Lakes Search and Rescue K-9 Unit, the FBI, the ATF, the Department of Justice's uh, Division of Criminal Investigation and their Crime Lab, the Medical Examiner's Office, the District Attorney's Office, the Milwaukee County Transit System, Wisconsin Southern Railroad, the United States Coast Guard, forensic anthropologist, 
Gordon Karsten, and other partners who may have helped in this endeavor. Your help was very invaluable. Again, we extend our sincere condolences to the Robinson family as they navigate this difficult time and mourn the loss of Sade. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Norman, who's going to talk about other parts of the investigation. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Paul. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, on behalf of the Market Peace Department, our hearts and prayers go out to the family of Sade Robinson. This is a horrendous tragedy, and above all else, we cannot imagine the pain that you must be going through. Please know that you have our deepest thoughts and condolences. Details of some of the Market Police Department's involvement can be found in the criminal complaint that was filed by the district attorney this morning. What we can share at this time is this. On April 2nd, Milwaukee Police Department investigated an arson at the 2800 block of West Lisbon Avenue. Visual surveillance recovered from the arson investigation led investigators to search the area of 3000 West Galena Street. On Friday, April 5th, investigators located human remains in the area. On Saturday, April 6th, MPD continued the search of in the area and located additional human remains on the railroad tracks. Later in the evening on Saturday, April 6th, MPD returned to the area when Ms. Robinson's family located her blanket. At this time, detectives located additional human remains. The, the identification of the human remains recovered by MPD are still pending. I repeat that. The additional human remains is still being looked at and the investigation is pending in regards to the identification of that. Please note, we continue to search for additional evidence that has not been located. Anyone with information is asked to contact Milwaukee Police Department at 414-935-7360 or to remain anonymous. Contact Crime Stoppers at 414-224-TIPS or P3TIPS. We are grateful for the efforts of the Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office, and other federal and local law enforcement partners for their tireless efforts to gather facts and evidence in this case. Please remember, this is an ongoing investigation, and as information becomes available, we will do so in sharing it. And we also ask to please remember to respect the privacy of the family at this time and allow them to grieve. At this time, I'll turn it back over to Sheriff Ball. So if you have some questions that we can answer, um, you can ask them now. Just to clarify, so the severed leg has been confirmed connected to Robinson, but not the human remains found Friday, Saturday, and Sunday by the Milwaukee Police Department. A preliminary investigation has shown that the leg is Ms. Robinson's, and yes, the, the uh, human remains um, have not been identified yet. Are you looking into other missing women and reviewing those cases to possibly connect it to this case? This is an ongoing case, and we have looked at other um, um, parts of the investigation to see if there are any uh, others that could be linked. Uh, and so far, we there hasn't been any evidence that there is any other um, victims. Are you concerned that there could be other victims? There hasn't been anything that uh, is pointed to that right now. Prosecutors are saying that this happened from the time that the two were went back to Anderson's house, according to the criminal complaint, until the time that he paid to Warnemont Park, which is a pretty wide time frame. Do we know when this killing happened and where it happened? Was it at the home? Was it in a car? Was it at the park? I, I'm a little unclear on that portion of the criminal complaint. We can't. It's still part of the ongoing uh, investigation, so we can't uh, comment on that. Do you know how she died? Can't comment on that. Or do we know how they met the, the, the suspect and the victim? It's it's my understanding that uh, they may have met at his uh, place of employment, uh, but uh, right now we can't confirm that. Since we don't have identification of all of the remains that have been found, can you confirm or not if there is any danger to the public? At this time, we don't believe that there are any other victims out there and that the person who 
uh, is responsible for this heinous crime has been arrested. Are you still searching for remains for Ms. Robinson? Yes, we are. Do you know where those remains could be? No. Have you found a, or do you, have you recovered a murder weapon in this situation? Ongoing investigation. Folks, we have time, interest of time, two more questions. Has there been a motive established? Ongoing investigation. What did you find inside that home, specifically in the basement? Cannot release that, that at this time. Is anyone else connected to the crime that will be more charges? We, we have no evidence there. there's anyone else that's related to this offense. But, uh, you know, we, as I stated before, it is an ongoing investigation. When is the soonest that we can expect another update? As soon as we get information. Is he speaking with investigators? Anderson? It's my understanding that he has uh, retained a lawyer. Is there anything you can say about the sex dungeon? No. All right, folks. Just how could you describe the crime? I mean, you called it a heinous crime. Just how are your investigators doing having to tackle this right now? Well, just to know that someone has, uh, you know, been dismembered in a fashion like that, uh, you know, it, um, you know, our investigators, they want to find justice for the victim. And so right now, that's what their focus is on. But, you know, any crimes like this, it's bound to, at some point in time, have an effect on those who are involved. Well, Sheriff, thanks, mm -hmm. Chief. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Um, no promises, but there could be an additional briefing at a later date, sooner rather than later. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, I wish I could tell you to call Sergeant Cornejo over there and not me, but um, <laughs> call me. All right, uh, there it is, that uh, news conference today in uh, Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, the last question it was, uh, you know, and this has got to be very difficult uh, for those involved in this identification of these body parts being found ac around the county. Right. Um, and I'm glad they clarified that uh, they there's no indication that there are multiple victims. It's just the timing right. of positively IDing the all of the body ID'd parts. one part and not to, another. Yeah, the leg and, and the rest is still pending, but it, there's no indication that there's other uh, victims here. Michael Jaffer, it, uh, there does seem to be uh, uh, enough, obviously, to to charge this individual. They met at his workplace. It doesn't sound like they worked together. I'm not quite, you know, we're not sure where he worked, but this was a first date um, turned fatal, according to the criminal complaint. Your thoughts here on um, what what what's next here? In, in he's got a lawyer. What what's what's next for both sides? Ace, because whenever police make the move that they make now we were just analyzing this you know, last week on another case whenever you see police make the moves that they're making now they're pretty certain right that doesn't mean it's a guarantee that you're going to get convicted but it does mean that it does guarantee you that they're confident in their case for them to make the move right and so this person basically now we're going to start seeing the evidence come out the the investigation is still ongoing right um and so we really don't know the extent of the evidence but they feel pretty confident to charge obviously right double jeopardy would apply if you charge somebody you go to a trial and they get acquitted right i mean then at that point you know if, if evidence comes out later on then they've already been acquitted it's done right so they seem seem pretty confident so the next steps are us basically just seeing it lay out there and then they proceed with the with the charges this is such a difficult case and i know a lot of women watching this are going to be reacting and having a lot of questions about how they met i know they mentioned the workplace but the criminal complaint says that she was excited about this first date with someone new and there's the images the surveillance video of her sitting at the bar with him that they're laughing things seem to be going good how did things turn to this but i think that that possible date turned fatal element of this michael jaffer will be just an added thing that would be really hard for a jury to overlook if this case goes there we're in an era now where you could date anybody at any time and meet people online anywhere, right? And then you meet people. And so the overwhelming majority of those encounters do not end up in 
charred, dismembered remains laying around your community. They don't end that way. We all find out about the cases like this, which have a chilling effect on everybody else in society. And so everybody, you see this beautiful girl, right, in the pictures of her, right? This is going to resonate. And this is going to be the thing that, you know, would taint a jury pool. This person either did it or didn't do it. Those are the only two options. He's either guilty or he's, he either, either did it or he didn't do it. We're all going to be looking at the evidence to see, not only because we want justice in this case, but because we all have, you know, you know, daughters and we were sisters, you know, we, you know, who meet people online. And, you know, I, you, you just you don't want to imagine stuff like this happens again. It happens in the infinitesimal percentage of these encounters, but it happens. And it's a reminder that it happens. Um, so we're going to be looking at this case closely for personal reasons and business reasons. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is. It, these are the ones that uh, just shock you to the core. Things that happen in life and every now and then something comes up and you're like, whoa. Um, it makes you think.